Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. Let's break down some news and rumors around your Dallas Cowboys, beginning with some injury concerns. We'll start with Lael Collins. Is he going to be out for the year? I'm giving this one a firm maybe. I am genuinely concerned. I, my, it, my concern level rose back when the Cowboys tried to sign Jared Valdir, offered him some pretty good money, and then he retired. That was a big-time red flag for me. The latest reports coming out of Dallas, and sh shout out Jane Slater here, surgery is an option for Lael Collins' hip injury. Right now, the Cowboys are trying to manage it and have Collins return at some point this season. The problem is, per our good old friend Dr. Jerry Jones, nobody knows what that looks like right now. They don't know what the situation is at the current moment. They, they don't know how long it's going to take for him to be able to return or be able to play. They don't have a timetable. That is significantly concerning to me. They don't know, and that troubles me because does that mean he, is he out for the year? Does he need the surgery? Hip surgery is not great for an offensive lineman. What does his recovery from that look like? So I am very troubled about Lael Collins. I don't know if he's going to be able to play this year which has a whole bunch of other issues because right now your plan number three tackle is Cam Irving. He didn't win the job and is on IR. That leaves Brandon Knight and Terrence Steele. Now, the Cowboys gave Steele the job back in week one when Collins was first placed on IR, but I think Brandon Knight has been a better football player for this team. So we don't, we'll get into Tyron Smith here in a second. If Tyron Smith is able to go, I am putting Brandon Knight at right tackle. And what the Cowboys have typically preferred is to, instead of move players over, of course they had to last week, but they prefer to promote backups and keep guys in their current spots. So I genuinely don't know what the answer to this question is. If Lael Collins will play this year, I am troubled by it. But we're a show for the people. So I want you guys to get your votes in. Type one for yes or zero for no. Will Lael Collins play this season? Now let's go on to Tyron Smith here. Is he going to play in week four? Two stars on this one. I, I wanted to give it two and a half. We don't have that capabilities, so I'm going to be cautious and give it two because I just need to see it happen first. Like the, the neck issue, it's always there. The Cowboys kind of made it seem like, oh, yeah, Tyron, he might be able to play in, in, in week two and then, then in week three. And, of course, we know what happened on that front. Now the hope is for today to get Smith back on the field in 11-on-11 11 11 drills. And if that goes well, that could be a very good sign that Smith will be able to play in Week 4 against the Cleveland Browns. That would, in theory, put Brandon Knight over at right tackle. And you could leave Connor Williams at left guard. Maybe Tyler Beata starts at center. We'll see about that one. I thought he played better than Joe Looney. Not sure the Cowboys feel that way. But the number one thing for this Cowboys offensive line right now is they have to get Tyron Smith back, and healthy, of course, as soon as possible. They need him out there. The offensive line has not been great. The coaching staff does not trust the offensive line, and that is why the, the, the Cowboys have not taken shots deep downfield. Getting Tyron Smith back would be a significant change to this offensive line. Now, speaking of what you guys need to do, head over to BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS125. That'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. Now, I already placed my bet this week. I love to do parlays. You bet on a couple different games, merge them all into one bet, you can make more money. So here's my free advice. Can't lose parlay of the week. Just pure money lines. Win outright. Doesn't matter about the point spread. Saints over the Detroit Lions. Seahawks over the Dolphins. The Ravens over a bad Washington team. The Rams over an even worse Giants team. Then I've got the Indianapolis Colts against the Bears. That is the one tricky game right there. Cardinals over the Panthers too. The Colts are a road favorite against an undefeated team. That seems weird, right? That means Vegas knows. So I put down five bucks on this bet, and you can win 29 of 47 if you do the exact same thing. That's some pretty good return on your bet right there. So head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code COWBOYS125 to get you a 125% deposit bonus. So put down 100 bucks. they're going to give you an extra 125 for free. 
Some more offensive line discussion. Is Zach Martin going to go back to right guard? Three stars on this one, bordering on four, but there is still a possibility of more chaos for this offensive line. Martin did play well when he was pressed into right tackle duty against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, he was asked about, hey, are, are you going to stay out there at, at right guard or right tackle and move back to guard? And Martin said, I'm playing guard, which maybe means it's four stars. However, I still have some concerns about the offensive line injuries. They're already so thin. They don't trust the, the, the backups at left tackle and right tackle right now. And in the event that Tyron can't go or gets hurt again, you could see Brandon Knight stay at that left tackle spot. And based on what I've seen this year, I would rather move Tyler Beadish into center, kick Joe Looney and Zach Martin over one spot each, and keep Martin at the right tackle spot. He can be a very good right tackle. Maybe he's not quite elite best right tackle in the NFL, like he is as the best right guard right now, but I would rather keep Martin at that right guard spot. I think it's just a, a simple option for the Dallas Cowboys. You don't want to make too many changes. I like keeping Martin at that particular position. Let's go to Trevon Diggs now. How about benching him? How about no, you idiots? Fake news on this one. Going to give some big shout-outs here to Bleach Report. They put out their, their article of one player each NFL team should demote. And you could have gone a lot of different directions. And you went with Trevon Diggs. What are we doing out here? Not only that, their solution to giving Diggs less playing time Sign Mo Claiborne. Are, are we sure about that, fellas? Look, I know that Diggs has gotten beat a decent amount this year, which is what I warned everybody for a significant amount of time leading up to the season. He's going to have ups and downs. He's had some great plays. Heck, he showed you those up and downs on one play against DK Metcalf where he got roasted and then forced a fumble. But saying to demote a corner doesn't make sense because two of your top three guys are out right now. You want, if you get those guys back, okay, maybe you don't play Diggs every single snap. I can have that discussion. But you knew going into this year that Trevon Diggs was not going to be perfect. And that's what he's been this year. He's allowed 65% of his passes his way to be completed. Has allowed 234 yards. That's top five most allowed in the NFL. He has two pass breakups. Doesn't have an interception. He should have at least one, but he dropped it. Diggs has been inconsistent. That's exactly what we expected as a second-round pick who was inconsistent at times in college. He was never going to be an overnight number one corner. Part of the reason for playing him was that it was going to take some time for him to develop. That's why he's on the field. He's your best corner right now. Pulling him is stupid. There's no way around it. Now, in terms of how we grade digs this year, get your votes in, a for yes, B for no, C or A, B, C, D, or F, excuse me, just the, the outright grade there. I think a round of B is fair for Trevon Diggs, given his expectations. He has not played like an A. He also has certainly not earned an F grade in terms of benching him outright at the current moment. Now, if you want good Cowboys analysis, unlike that idea from Bleacher Report, and I want you guys to subscribe to the number one Cowboys YouTube channel out there, no one does more videos, has more fun during the games and before games and all of that. We have the single best Cowboys coverage out there. That's why we are rapidly approaching 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit the big red button and join today. More injury notes here this time around to Marcus Lawrence. Will he play in week four? I'm going to give this one three stars. Now, Lawrence was out of practice Wednesday and Thursday, but that's what we saw last week. And the Cowboys are clearly managing his injury. Lawrence dealing with that knee problem. He is not going to be a full goal. And we can have the discussion about, you know, Lawrence's play and the, the lack of sacks and him just not being 100%. But I do applaud him for gutting through that injury. He's been limited the past two games. When he was on the field, having gone back and watched multiple times, quite frankly, Lawrence was better. And the defense is better with Lawrence out there. So in terms of the pass rush snaps, Tank's only been out there for 47% of them. If he had been out there for 60%, I think he would legitimately have at least one sack, which is not saying much but it's better than zero. Your real issue right now and why you need Tank out there is that Dorrance Armstrong sucks right now. He, he is a wasted body every time he's out there on the field. 
every time. Zero pressures. Maybe unleash Bradley and I a little bit more, give his snaps to, to Dorrance Armstrong. But you still need Tank out there. He remains your best run defender. Yes, he has not lived up to his contract, frankly, by any means at this point, but he's not a bad player. You want Lawrence out there on the field. The defense has a lot more success when he's able to play. Now, I think he goes. I think he'll be limited again against a pretty good Browns offensive line, but if he doesn't get fully healthy, he's not going to hit the 10.5 sack prediction that I had for Demarcus Lawrence. So let's update that number. I want you guys to chime in for me in the comments section. How many sacks... Do you think Demarcus Lawrence will put up this year? Is it one, two, three, up to I think maybe 10 is like your absolute max at this stage with the injury? Get your votes in. How many sacks do you think Tank will have this season? A couple notes here I wanted to wrap up with on the practice squad. The Cowboys have made some changes. One they wanted to and one they didn't want to. First up, Jordan Mills, the longtime NFL veteran. He has signed with the Cowboys practice squad. 84 career starts. Don't let that fool you. He's actually not that good. But there are no good offensive linemen available in the free agency market because if they were actually good, they would have been signed. The bad news here for the Cowboys is that Rondell Carter, the defensive lineman out of James Madison, who the Cowboys gave their highest signing bonus to and top five among 2020 undrafted free agents, has signed with the Indianapolis Colts. He is not going to be a member of the Cowboys anymore. The Colts poached him, and now he's gone. 